So what's the real story behind our most viral video ever? So many of you watched this video from the last weekend and asked us what, what's going on? Well, th first of all, thank you for your prayers, for your love, for your support. We're all safe uh, here in Jerusalem. We really appreciate the prayers, but let me, let me give a little bit of context of what was happening in this video clip. Uh, here at our ministry center in Jerusalem, just downstairs, there was a national worship gathering of Messianic Jewish leaders from across the country that were publishing new Messianic Jewish Hebrew worship songs. So it was, it was an event for the body of believers. And unfortunately, one of the ultra-Orthodox Jewish INT missionary groups caught wind of this gathering. It was a little overwhelming to watch. I remember the first time I stood in one of these protests uh, several years ago, just hearing people shouting, you know, hateful things and Jesus is dead and we crucified Jesus and it, it really, really hurt my heart to see such hatred, such scorn and, and despising of who Jesus is. And we saw so many of the comments and some of the comments on the video we saw were quite concerning, uh, maybe leading us to say, well, this is, this is why the Jewish people uh, are, are not to be loved. And I just want to maybe help correct some of that narrative. First of all, uh, the, the history of the church and the Jewish people. I mean, their idea of a missionary forcing someone to believe and change their religion, in their mind, it's worse than a Nazi. You're, you're killing the soul of a Jew. So we have to understand that's the perspective they're coming from. But, but maybe even foremost, I would, I would comment on Romans 11, verse 28. The Apostle Paul writes this and he says, on behalf of the gospel, the Jewish people, they're enemies for your sake. He's saying, well, as you're spreading the gospel, the Jewish people are enemies. They're, they're persecuting, they're, they're shutting you down. But he said, on behalf of their forefathers, they're beloved. So there's this holy dichotomy, this holy seeming contradiction. They're, they're, they're enemies of the gospel, but they're beloved for the sake of their forefathers, because of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because of the promises. And our response, even Jesus says, when you, you're reviled, when you're provoked, when your enemies treat you poorly, we're supposed to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. And so our heart's desire is, how do, how do we love the ultra-Orthodox Jewish community? How do we pray for them and understand, while there may be a veil over the eyes today, we want to see a day where every person in this land is transformed with the love of Yeshua. It's also worth pointing out, we're in Israel with freedom of democracy, freedom of religion. We're in a wonderful country that protects us. I'm so grateful for so many of the police officers that helped to uh, calm down the riots and, and, and protect and do the best they could to, to, to de-escalate the situation. Uh, this group, uh, these group of anti-missionaries, they really represent a very small minority in the country, um, a very fringe group, uh, not the common uh, uh, group in Israel. They don't represent all Jewish people, but an, an ultra-extremist Jewish group. How can we pray for, love on, uh, pray for a day where all of Israel will be saved? We know there's great hope and a great future for the Jewish people. And so thank you for so many of you new followers that have joined our Instagram page. Uh, we're happy you're here along the way for the journey. We hope to continue publishing resources to help inspire, educate, and mobilize you to love Israel and the Jewish people in a gospel-centered way.